I'm Summer. Let's talk reptiles. So it's been an interesting start to 2024 with the passing of Brian Barczyk. The reptile community is feeling a whole lot of pain right now. It's also feeling a whole lot of conflict. I've seen a mix of different posts um, being made in our community around thoughts and feelings when it comes to Brian. And there's folks that are angry about the posts that are being made, calling out uh, what they classify as being some past wrongdoings. And folks are also communicating a lot of frustration and anger around the timing of folks saying these types of things. I think that it's important for us to have these conversations, but to also have those conversations in ways that are healthy and good and productive. This week's episode is about reptile influencers, the good, the bad, and the inhumane. Let's get into it. Let's talk reptiles. continue i made that little intro that you just watched and tell me what you think of it is it too long is it good i kind of like it but i'm also very new to doing all of these types of things and i kind of time the intro so that it's shorter than 30 seconds uh, sometimes i find for me when i'm watching a podcast or listening to something i get a little frustrated at the length of the intros but yeah okay so we this podcast is Let's Talk Reptiles. We talk about reptiles, amphibians, issues within our community, husbandry, care, fun stuff, serious stuff, controversial stuff, all kinds of things. That is what this podcast is all about. This is our fourth episode, I think. Fourth? Fifth? Fourth. Our fourth episode. So if you're into that type of stuff, please follow along, give us a like, subscribe, ring that little bell, all of those things. Let's get into our conversation. So as I already said, this episode is about reptile influencers, the good, the bad, and the inhumane. And I've been wanting to have this conversation for quite a while. It first kind of really came up for me, maybe... I mean, it's always kind of been on my mind, but there was an incident that happened about two years ago with uh, one of my younger friends. Uh, uh, at the time, I want to say she was probably eight and she really loves reptiles and she watches a lot of videos from a lot of different reptile influencers and her and I had... I'm not even sure how to classify it because I didn't have a fight or an argument with my eight-year-old friend. Like that didn't happen. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I'll tell you the situation. Hey y'all, sorry about the audio. I got a new mic and it sucks. I'm gonna get another one. Next episode will be better. So we were talking about snakes and keeping snakes, and she really, really likes snake discovery. She watches a lot of their videos, uh, and she gets really excited about snakes. And so she was talking about snake di discovery, keep their snakes in little drawers, uh, as like she was calling them. And so my partner and I, we were having this conversation with her around like different ways that you can keep snakes. And like she was getting very upset because in her eight year old mind, uh, snake discovery said in her mind, snake discovery, and from what she could perceive from watching their videos, snake discovery gave out the messaging that this is the best way to keep these animals. And so we were having this conversation with her and we're like, you know, there's multiple ways that you can do this, you know, and like just because snake discovery they're keeping their snakes in this type of way doesn't mean that that is the best way to keep these animals and she got really upset and started having a bit of a meltdown and she was like snake discovery and she like could understand 
the some of the nuances behind it based on the things that she was saying. Uh, she was saying that like they keep their snakes like this because they don't have enough room and they want to make sure that they can have all the snakes they need to have. And so we're trying to explain to her like, yeah, that is a part of the reason why people keep their snakes in racks because they are trying to have enough space for all the animals that they need to keep. But she was getting very upset. And in that moment, I was getting very frustrated, not with her, but with the system of reptile influencers. A lot of times folks that become the most popular in our community in terms of the content that they put out aren't the best representation of our hobby as a whole. Now, I'm not saying don't get me wrong, don't come for me or come for me in the comment section. Let's talk about it. Um, I'm not saying that snake discovery is a good or a poor example of our reptile hobby, our reptile community. That's not at all what I'm saying. What I am saying is that the folks that become most popular sometimes aren't the best examples and they get the most eyes on their content. They get the most playtime or airtime on their content on the social media networks and YouTube. And they're really forming the opinion of the, especially the young people that are watching their content and being brought into the hobby. Now, folks like Brian, one of the arguments that I saw out in the world is that like, he's done a lot for the reptile community just based on the amount of folks that he's introduced to the hobby. And I agree with that 100% not just him but folks like snake discovery as well and then other big influencers um they've done a really good job of making these amazing animals exciting for folks and they're already really exciting to us the geeks that are already just like fully just tied in to this hobby and loving these animals and all of that stuff and i do agree that one of the great things that brian did for our hobby as a whole is introducing folks to reptiles that may never have thought about reptiles before right that's really beautiful like to have that kind of impact it's so cool like i i think it's so cool right and snake discovery does a lot of that same thing they have this impact where they are bringing people into the hobby and introducing them to the hobby and getting kids really excited and interesting and i love that the other side of this is that moment that i had with my friend who is eight years old at the time was frustrating for me because this is the introduction that she is getting to the idea of keeping reptile, reptiles through snake discovery. And because this is what she's seeing in front of her eyes, she is in her mind, this is how you do it. This is how you keep your animals. Snake discovery is right. They never do anything incorrectly. Like in her mind and not just her mind, I'm thinking of her as a representation of like probably the majority of the little people, the little humans that are enjoying this content, seeing that as this is the way in the avenue. And in that moment, my frustration really revolved around the, the idea and the importance of providing more context in these instances, like saying stuff like, we keep our animals in this way, but there's other ways to do it. And there are, uh, this way is good for our animals in X, Y, and Z based on the way that we keep them. But there are ways that could be good for our animal, for animals in X, Y, and Z ways, like keeping them in vivariums or keeping them in larger tubs or keeping them in more enriched environments, giving them enrichment in their tub, so on and so forth, right? So I got really frustrated in that moment because for her, like if she were to go get a snake, if she were to go get a snake at that young age of eight, in her mind, the way that she was supposed to take that snake home and set it up was to basically put it in a dresser drawer and set it up in that way, right? And for breeder operations, like, 
like I talked about in my last video around the things that motivate the decisions we make around our reptiles, like breeders have different motivating factors when they're making their decisions around how to keep their animals in pet homes different motivating factors around their decisions, right? So the thing that really kind of stuck with me was where's the balance, right? Like reptile influencers, they get a, like the bigger guys, they get a lot of airtime around the way that they keep their reptiles and the things that they do. And for the ones who are say breeders, like, a big part of their the way that they keep their reptiles and the way that they're showing their reptiles in the content, especially for the ones that are getting a whole lot of um, eyes of kids, like kids are a whole lot of the people that are viewing their content. I think a lot about the responsibility of providing balanced interpretations of what works uh, and the different ways that you could keep these animals and enrich these animals, so on and so forth, right? So going back to talking about Brian a little bit more, folks, really what I was seeing in the comments and just in my, my, my own past experience of like paying attention to Brian over the years, um, folks were really having beef with a lot of the ways that he has kept his animals over the years, uh, making all kinds of accusations around the idea of like uh, animal neglect and animal abuse and all of those things. And to be fully transparent, like I have also had my uh, negative opinions of Brian over the years as well. The other side of that is that he is a human being, right? He's a human being who makes mistakes no differently from any of us, right? I have made mistakes and I've had reptiles die. The main difference between me, my mistakes and his mistakes is that I don't have 5 million people witnessing that mistake that I made and then forming opinions around that. One of my turning points in terms of thinking about Brian and the work that he did and the impact that he had and has in our community is just remembering that, right? That he's a person that makes mistakes, but has 5 million eyes that could potentially see the mistakes that he has made and form opinions around that. And that's one of the downsides of, of producing content, right? If you Put it out there for people to see then you put it out there for people to have a thought and an opinion and judgment around that mistake that you made right and but when i really think about like when i think about him and his breeding days and his rack days and like all of that stuff like he's really no different from every other person who breeds snakes and keeps them in racks really like if we look across like many of our different snake communities like ball pythons like horn snakes or milk snakes like all of these guys who uh, work with these animals and they breed them on like a medium to larger even small scale and they keep their animals in racks like what brian was doing with his rack system was really no different from what everyone else was doing uh, and everyone else still is doing, he just had a lot of eyes able to see what he was doing and a lot of eyes able to see whatever mistakes that he was making to be quite, to just be like blunt about that. That's the only difference between what he was doing and what other people do, right? And like the idea of persecuting the identity of a whole person based on honestly mistakes that a lot of us have made is i don't know it's hard it's hard to balance that right it's hard to really think about that and like put it into perspective now the other side of it i get it when you have five million plus eyes potentially able to see what you're putting out in the world and you have the ear of people uh in a community that's what like six million reptiles six million american households have at least one reptile in it so when your followership is like 
five million, which is like could potentially be most of the U.S. homes that have reptiles in them. I get it. You have a higher responsibility and a bigger duty to like doing things well and doing things correctly and like putting out a good what's the word I'm looking for? Like, God, what is the word I'm looking for? Like a good. Uh, like setting a good example, like you have a higher responsibility to set a good example in those contexts, right? Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. There's, I do understand that and I get that, that, res that duty or responsibility to do things better, higher, uh, like better than what other folks are doing it in the general community, right? And the downside of that is like when we're talking about reptiles, this really is like, it's still new. Like this is still like, this isn't an old hobby, like say fish keeping or something like that. Like fish keeping has been happening for way longer than reptile keeping has, which means there's been a whole lot more time to like learn in advance and tweak and get things right and get things wrong and learn and have animals thrive, have animals die. Like, it's been going on a lot longer fish keeping than we have. We're still a baby. And we're just starting to get to a place uh, as a hobby where we're getting like actual products that are satisfying needs of our animals outside of the basics of they need a box to live in, a bowl to eat out of. Like we're starting to get actual lighting. Like we're starting to get products like innovation is starting to happen at a more rapid pace in our hobby like and i say that to say that because we are still so fledgling it's there's so much room for folks especially folks that are were doing this 20 years ago 30 years ago like so much more possibility for things to go poorly to not be done in the best way that they could be done because like folks were very much so still learning and figuring out what does the best way look like right what does doing this right and well look like right and like there are things that were blaring of course like the um the snake with the respiratory infection like there like some of the things that happened in front of our eyes in the content that was put out by Brian. Like, yeah, there's some things that were absolutely blaring that needed a needed a correction like ASAP, like ASAP, right? And I get that. I totally do. I get that like 100%. Also, as a person who probably has like 10 reptiles too many, there's definitely been instances where I didn't notice something as quickly as I wish I would have noticed it. And that's my bad, right? Like I should never have more reptiles than I can manage and handle. That should be the case in every instance across the board. Like no one should have more reptiles than they are capable, than they are capable and able to manage. And don't get me wrong, I am capable and able of, to manage all of my animals that I have. But when I was in the process of building out the store, for example, that was, a, and I have a full-time job, like that was a lot of balls I was juggling. It was really difficult. And things did fall through the cracks. Unfortunately, it, it like things happened and fell through the cracks. And it was like heartbreaking for me, devastating for me when i knew for sure like this was something preventable i could have fixed it right i that that's a mistake i didn't have to make right and so there everything has multiple sides like it's making sure and making sure that there's balance that you can take care of things the way that they need to be taken care of and when they need to be taken care of and like never forgetting that none of us are robots that we can't take care of an infinite number of animals and sometimes folks learn that lesson the hard way that is a lesson that i've unfortunately learned the hard way and i'm pretty sure like more than a few handful of us 
out there and folks watching this video have also learned that lesson the hard way, right? So my question that I put out to all of you and that I often think about for myself is when it comes to like large reptile folks that are putting out content, the things that folks choose to talk about uh, that they, especially once your platform gets bigger and bigger and bigger, thinking about what is the responsibility and what does that look like, right? Like we aren't a bunch of like, like this isn't like say a hobby where we're working with inanimate objects, right? Like we're not working with things like, I don't know, collecting baby is that okay cool we're, we're not that's where my my mind went it went to beanie babies so we're not collecting beanie babies we are collecting actual living creatures like i i take issue with the words like using the terminology collection when referring to our animals because when i think of a collection of something i'm thinking inanimate objects like a collection of cars a collection of like stamps, a collection of baseball cards. Like I'm not thinking about a living animal, a living breathing, breathing creature, sentient creature when I think of like the word collection. And, but that's a, a subject for a whole nother day, right? And so like when it comes to the big reptile influencers, like I do often think about how much are they thinking about the extent of their actual responsibility, right? Like you're bringing new people into the hobby and that's awesome. What is your content teaching them though? Like what is your content teaching them about how they should care for and think about these animals because you're influencing them? Like my TikTok following is, I mean, it's not huge, but it's nice. And there are folks on my TikTok who like do what I do and here, like they come to me for in information on how to best take care of their animals. Um, a dad brought his son to meet me once uh, at a reptile show. Well, this has happened like multiple times, but this particular instance, uh, a dad brought his son as a surprise to meet me. And his dad said, you know, like I'll be trying, he was like, I'll be trying to tell him like, oh man, like you need to do this or do this with your reptile. And he doesn't want to listen to me. And then I'll say, well, what did Summer say? And he'll be like, oh, Summer said I should do it like this and I should do it like that. And the dad was laughing because he was, he's like, man, that's the same thing I just told you and you don't want to listen to me, but you'll do it if Summer said do it, right? And like, that is one of the responsibilities, like being aware of what are you telling these new people educating these new people about when they come into the hobby, right? Are you just showing, are all your videos just showing you hoarding more and more animals? So then as you bring in people into this hobby, they are like, yeah, man, I just need to hoard. I need to just get as many animals as I can. Pokemon, got to collect them all. Like, is that what your content is educating the people about? Like the new ones that you're bringing into the hobby? Um, are you telling them as they come into the hobby, like, yeah, like the best way to keep your, your one ball Python is inside of a, like a, st a little sterilite container. And that's like how they should live their whole life. And that's fine if that is what you believe to be true. And that's what you want to educate people like to believe. But if it isn't, you need to think about that. Like if I'm bringing in like, all, hundreds of new people into the hobby of reptiles like is that what i want them to believe is the best way to do this because this is what they're witnessing me doing or do i want to make sure i'm giving them a well-rounded perspective real well-rounded perspective on how to do this and what to do right and like i think about that often you know like i would love to grow and be like have like a lot of subscribers and all of that good stuff you know and we'll see what happens with time uh and with like my TikTok following like i do think about that a lot with the content that i put out there because i just want to make sure that like i'm being as well-rounded as possible and 
with the very first thing in the front of my mind always with anything that I post with the content, any educational things I put out in the world that I'm censoring animal welfare with everything that I say and everything that I put out into the community, right? So there's folks in our community that are like, we're honestly upset by the outpouring of like hero dumb that Brian was being anointed with um, in his passing and folks that were like very upset that they, he was being compared to Steve Irwin. And that's a, I'll touch on that more in a, in a moment, I think. And like there were folks genuinely upset about that because they felt like we as a community are like deifying this person who was problematic when it came to animal care and taking care of their animals, right? And then on the other side, there were folks who only got into reptiles because of Brian, like they were influenced by him and he like introduced them to the idea of keeping reptiles and they wouldn't be even a part of this community if he, if he didn't exist, if he didn't put his content out there, like they wouldn't be here. And they were sincerely heartbroken, even if they never met him, sincerely heartbroken by the loss of a person that they view to be their hero, right? And in my opinion, one doesn't cancel out the other, right? Like he was an influential person and will be still for a long time. And he brought a bunch of people into this hobby and like that in and of itself, growing the hobby, getting more people interested in the hobby, like having more folks to like advocate for the keeping of these animals, folks. And as those folks grow and develop and educate themselves and learn more, like all of that is good and important and impactful, right? Like in order for this hobby to become what it can be with time, there has to be participants. And without people like Brian bringing in participants and like snake discovery bringing in participants, the hobby is not going to grow or it's going to, it's going to stagnate. It's not going to evolve. Like all of those voices are needed. Right. And all of this awesome stuff that he did also doesn't cancel out like the past mistakes that he made. And for me, one of the things that I saw when it comes to Brian is that as a human, he seemed, and then like knowing people, like having good friends that were actual close good friends of him and having conversations about him with them, like his persona of like kindness and like open-heartedness and loving all lovingness like all of that is is real it's who he was like he wasn't like putting on a social media hat and then putting on some performance like he was this genuinely this caring kind loving excited about animals human being right like that is a part of who he actually was as a person and for me, the things that I saw, the more that I thought about it and looked into Brian and was because like his I refuse to watch his content. Like I still don't really fully watch his content. Like sometimes I will. But one of the things that I saw like in the content of his that I have observed is that he grew and he evolved and he changed his ways and his thinking around the way that he keeps animals. Now, were there problematic things still happening? Yeah, like still breeding things like, uh, like breeding spider that has a wobble, like breeding ball python morphs that knowingly have neurological problems. But is he the only one that's doing it? No, go on Morph Market right now and type in spider or like ball pythons and like go to like search the trait spider. Like I really challenge all of you guys to go do that. And there's going to be a, a high number of ball pythons that still that are babies newly produced that have the spider gene in it. Right. So he's not some lone outlier working with 
a, a morph that is genetically predisposed to issues. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I'm definitely 100% against that. Like to any of you guys out there watching this, if you're breeding spider, man, stop. Why are you doing it? Like, why are you breeding? Why are you working with a morph that has known neurological problems? Stop that shit. It's not cool. <laughs> but yeah, so there was like, he was still doing some things and still making mistakes. And like, and if he wouldn't have gotten cancer, if cancer wouldn't have taken his life, like if he would have lived another 20, 30 years, like he would have made a whole bunch of other bunch of mistakes. The same way all of us are going, or not just mistakes, but bad decisions. The same way all of us are going to, we have like a whole lot of time in our life to make a whole bunch of bad decisions. And we are, we're going to make them like, like I'll speak just for myself because I can't speak for you angels and what you're going to be doing with your angel, your angelic life. But I'm going to make lots of mistakes and I'm going to like make bad decisions. I know I will because I'm a human being and that is what we do, man. Humans are like dumpster fires. Yeah, we're dumpster fires is what we are. <laughs> so like we're going to we're going to make poor decisions and it's it's just going to happen that way. Right. So in general, I do think a lot about this one because like I know that I don't have millions of people listening to me, but I have a lot of people listening to me and the content that I put out. And I know there's a big portion of those kids of that group that are kids. And I want to make sure that when it comes to what I am teaching the next generation of reptile keepers, that I am doing it right, that I am making sure that sure, like in, and especially with the store, having the shop now, like I've introduced like multiple people already into this hobby that had never kept a reptile before, never kept an amphibian before, right? And so I view it as my responsibility as a store owner, as a breeder, as a person making content, that I am setting the best example possible according, of course, to the way that I think these things should be done uh, and like, putting the animal's welfare number one, right? That is how the accountability that I hold myself to. And I do oftentimes wish that other content creators would do the same thing. A part of the issue with that comes down to the algorithm, right? Like a lot of reptile content creators, they're gonna put content out that is going to grab the attention not just the people that are into reptiles, but people who aren't into reptiles. I don't know if anyone who doesn't like reptiles is going to spend the time listening to my podcast and this content that I'm putting out in the world, right? But like for a lot of big content creators, they didn't get big just by pandering to us, like preaching to the choir as folks that are already here. Like they also have to put out content that can be entertaining and interesting to folks outside of the reptile hobby uh to get them curious and interested and in potentially like coming over to the scaly side with all of us right so yeah i just i don't know i think a lot about that i think a lot about our responsibility the type of content that we put out and like i think a lot about the big creators that are getting a lot of eyes and a lot of airtime, and like just wondering how much they think about what are they really teaching people in terms of the content that they put out. I spent time and watched a good bit of Snake Discovery's videos and the content isn't from my standpoint looking at it. And like oftentimes the same thing from what I see in like observe with Brian's content it wasn't, it's not about educating, it's about entertaining in a lot of different ways. Like Snake Discovery and a lot of the videos that they put out, it's about like, oh, this is what we're doing. This is vlog style. Like, I'm not trying to teach you something. I'm not trying to like educate you like directly about something. 
I am, I'm doing something and you're watching me do it. I'm cutting eggs and you're watching me do it. I'm collecting and harvesting eggs and you're watching me do it. Like, it's like, I'm doing something you're watching and I'm not trying to say, do something this way or do something that way. And I'm not trying to give a lot of educational content around how to do these things. That is my impression of their content, Snake Discovery, as well as Brian's content as well. And like, and I get that, like that's the vein that they exist in and that's the like niche of their content and the way that they want to do things. And also that doesn't absolve them or us or me or anyone else making content from considering what exactly am I teaching people that are watching my content? What exactly am I, what message am I leaving out in the world uh, for folks like being intentional, more intentional around what educational thoughts someone may walk away from watching your video with? That's what I got. I'm not sure how this video is going to be received and interpreted. I really would like to have more of this conversation in the comments if you guys are down to chat about this more. I am. This video is not in any way meant to be a basher about Brian in any way, shape, or form because, like, I don't feel negatively about Brian in that way. I don't feel like I don't feel negatively about Brian in that way. I don't feel positively about Brian in that way. Like, I have very middle of the road feelings when it comes to like his content and like and I do feel a lot of appreciation about like the way that he was able to introduce a lot of new people to these animals and like touching back on the Steve Irwin thing it's like it's interesting to me because what I think happens over time is that the longer that a person's been dead the more possible it becomes for folks to see them as a whole person, right? Like see all the different nuances. And a lot of folks were saying like whenever someone posted something about uh, what they perceived as Brian's past wrongdoings, people were like, this is not the time for this. This is not the time for this. Like, and like, I get it. I can, I understand why they posted it. And then I also understand why people were saying this is not the time for this type of this type of stuff while people are hurting and grieving and sad. And when I think about Steve Irwin, like he like deified in our community, right? And he made a big impact, played a big role in introducing all of these like lesser loved and unloved creatures to people. People also readily acknowledge today that Steve Irwin was also problematic in a lot of ways that a lot of the things that he did and said, the way that he sensationalized these animals, the way that he sen sensationalized the idea of like getting bit, not getting bit, like in some ways, like, and look, don't come for me, but that's a, some of the stuff that Jay Brewer does. And I got no love for that guy, you know? And so there was a lot of sensationalism that went with Steve Irwin's content. I also understand why because he was in real early days and really trying to make these things these animals interesting to people who probably never ever even thought about reptiles before and a much smaller segment of society was thinking about reptiles than today and so i understand why things were so sensationalized in the way that he did things and in his content and all of that stuff you know and so but now today he's been after he's been dead for such a like such a long time folks are able to see both sides and they can understand the positive impacts he had and not ignore the negative uh the negative behavior that he also had right and i think with time like that balance will also come with brian and it won't make it in a way where people are like like actually like that he was a pretty shit human i don't think that's going to happen i don't think that was true i don't think he was a shit human being i think from what i can see and tell that he was actually a good human being and like really generous and like like a lot of different things you know and like any other people like 
someone like all of us have made somebody mad in some kind of way at some point all of us have screwed over someone in some kind of way at some point in some like it's all happened you know like that is just all a part of human nature human behavior things that come when you're living right and so i think with time a similar phenomena where like Steve Irwin, Irwin was deified and he's still deified to a certain extent with certain groups of people and with certain in certain sex like conversations and all of that stuff. But there's some groups where he's deified, but also looked at realistically, where it's like, yeah, he was a great dude. And also he was a problematic dude. And then there's some groups that are like, nah, dude was mad problematic, like mad problematic. And that's just being a human and i that is i think the exact same thing that's gonna it's gonna come down to with brian as well it's gonna be like yeah deity no wrong some people are like yeah dude did some good stuff dude did some bad stuff and then some people are going to be like no nah, dude bad stuff don't rock with him at all and that's just life all right want to talk about it get in the comment section like me follow me subscribe Ring-a-ding that bell. That's all I got. I'm out of here.